Hi guys, this video will show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus into a retro gaming console. I will guide you from setting up the retro Pi, installing the games, and putting the Raspberry Pi into the Mega Pi case. It will be a super exciting project. So let's get started. Before we begin, I would like to say thank you to SeedStudio.com for sending me the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the compatible power supply to complete this project. If you guys interested in buying Raspberry Pi and Arduino products, you can go directly to their website and apply a Seed20 coupon code to get a 20% off for the whole month. So it's time to go shopping guys. So let's begin installing RetroPi. This is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Let's open the packaging and see what we got. So we got the Raspberry Pi, a piece of blank cotton paper with barcode, and a quick start guide. So basically, Raspberry Pi is a small computer with tons of features. We can use it for many projects such as media player, a desktop PC, and many more. Since we are going to make the Raspberry Pi as a retro game console, we will need a retro Pi this image. So head to the RetroPie site and choose Get RetroPie. Now choose the correct image for your Raspberry Pi. Mine is 3B+, so I chose the right button. For your information, the Raspberry Pi requires a minimum of 4GB microSD card to operate. But it is better to have a higher capacity memory card to store game ROMs and other data. And you need a USB keyboard, and at some point you need a mouse to complete the setup process. I use a wireless mouse and keyboard, so I just need to plug in the dongle into the Raspberry Pi. And you need a USB gamepad. I use the official Retroflex Classic USB controller M. Let's open the box. It is a Sega Genesis 6 button gamepad style. The design is good and it is pretty solid. And you need a USB power supply to turn on the Raspberry Pi. This is not an official Raspberry Pi power supply and the maximum output current is below the recommended standard. But I hope I won't face any problems using it. Then you need to download Etcher to write the RetroPie image into the microSD card. Put all the downloaded files on the desktop and insert the microSD card into the computer. For me, the microSD card is on drive G. Now extract the RetroPie image using WinRAR or Z1Zip. Then install Etcher. Now press select image and choose RetroPie image file. Etcher will automatically choose the microSD card, but you can change it if you have multiple microSD cards on your computer. When everything is good, then you are ready to flash the image to the microSD card. Please be patient as it will take about 10 minutes to flash the image. Now close Etcher and ignore the pop-up window. Then remove the microSD card from the computer. Now insert the microSD card into the Raspberry Pi. Then connect the USB dongle if you are using a wireless mouse or keyboard. And connect the USB gamepad. Then connect the HDMI cable. Then finally, connect the power supply. This is what you see on the screen when you first boot RetroPie. Please be patient as it will take a while to process. At this point, you need to remove the current gamepad, then hold the Y button while plugging it again into the USB port. 
If you don't do it, then RetroPie will detect the RetroFlag USB gamepad as an Xbox 360 gamepad which is of course not correct. So we want the gamepad detected as RetroFlag wired controller. Now it's time to configure the controller by following the on-screen instruction. Now since the RetroFlag USB gamepad has no trigger, thumb button, and no analog stick, then you need to press and hold any key to set the remaining button as not defined. But you need to assign the select button as the hotkey enable button. You need this button for shortcut combos, so it is important to set it up. Now press A to continue. Then press A again to open the configuration menu. Now select Raspberry config. We will set up the Wi-Fi country. Select localization options. Then select change Wi-Fi country. Select your country, then press A. Now select interfacing options. Select SSH, then enable it. By enabling SSH, we can transfer any files using SFTP or FTP client. Now select Finish to close the Raspberry Pi configuration menu. Then move the cursor down and select Wi-Fi. Then connect to Wi-Fi network. Select your access point and fill in the password if required. Now you can see the RetroPie IP address. Make a note of that. Now select Exit to close the Wi-Fi setup menu. Now we will find the default emulator course that came with RetroPie, so we can effectively prepare the correct game ROMs. Now head to RetroPie setup. You can read the pop-up window which basically says that we cannot sell RetroPie images and commercial product containing RetroPie. Now select Manage Packages. Then select Manage Main Packages. Now you can see a list of default emulators that came with RetroPie, and it is guaranteed to work perfectly with the appropriate ROMs. If you need to install additional cores, then you need to go back and choose Manage Optional Packages or Manage Experimental Packages. Now close the RetroPie setup. Now it's time to install the game ROMs. I have downloaded some legal ROMs from the internet, and I have put it inside the ROMs folder. These ROMs can be freely and legally distributed not for commercial use. You can find these ROMs from the link in the description. But of course, you can install pirated ROMs but it is against copyright and it is illegal. Now open your SFTP or FTP client. I use FlashFXP. Change the left column path to the ROMs folder on your computer. Then make a new SFTP over SSH connection. And enter the RetroPie IP address we got earlier. Enter Pi as its username and Raspberry as its password. Then press connect, then choose accept and save. Now navigate to RetroPie folder, then enter ROMs folder. Then transfer all the downloaded ROMs from the left column to the ROMs folder on the right column. Now press Start button on the RetroPie console, then choose Quit. Then choose Restart Emulation Station. Now you can see the game console icons on the home screen. You can try running some game ROMs. Let's try the Super Nintendo game.
Even though it is not a commercial game, I think it is pretty good. To quit the game, you need to press the start and select button together. Now you can try any other game. Now there is one more thing to do before putting the Raspberry Pi into the Mega Pi case. We will install the Retroflex Pi case safe shutdown feature. You can read about it on its GitHub page, then we need to follow the instruction to install it. But before doing it, I need to change the keyboard layout to the US since I'm using a US keyboard. For your information, the default RetroPie keyboard is UK version. The US and the UK version keyboard has a slightly different layout. So press the A button to open the RetroPie menu, then choose Raspi config. Then choose localization options. Choose change keyboard layout. You can choose your keyboard here, but I chose the default keyboard. Then choose other. Choose English US. Again choose English US. Then choose the default for keyboard layout. Then I chose no compose key. Now you can select finish to go back to the home screen. Now open the terminal by pressing the F4 button. Then type in the safe shutdown install command exactly. It is case sensitive so type it carefully. Now it's time to turn off the RetroPie console. Press the start button, then choose quit. Then choose shutdown system. Now remove everything from the Raspberry Pi. Let's begin installing the Megapi case. The first step is to install the heat sinks. Take the green heatsink and peel the release liner. Then install the heatsink on the top of the Raspberry Pi CPU. Now take the black heatsink and remove the release liner. Then install it on the top of the Ethernet chip. Now take the copper heatsink and remove the release liner. Then install it on the top of the RAM chip. Now let's take the Megapi case. Let's unbox it and see what we got. This is the instruction manual. And this is the Megapi case. Let's remove the top shell. So I got a Phillips screwdriver and some screws. Now take the Pi fan. The Pi fan is a mini fan that fits perfectly into the Megapi case. Install the fan with the sticker facing you. It means that the air will blow toward the CPU. For the Raspberry Pi, it will make the CPU cooler than sucking the hot air from the CPU surface. Then connect it into the fan socket.
Now take the Raspberry Pi and connect the header connector into the GPIO pins. Then connect the two USB cables into the USB ports. And then align the Raspberry Pi until it fits into the case. Then install two short screws at these points. I forgot to remove the micro SD card. So for those who haven't done it, it is time to remove the micro SD card right now. Since you have installed the safe shutdown feature, now you have to flick the safe shutdown switch to on. Now take the Megapi top shell and install it. Inspect all its side until it fits perfectly. Then install the remaining screws. Remove the plastic cover. You can remove the cover to reveal the USB port and the Ethernet port. Then you can access the microSD port by lifting the side cover. Now I will show you how the safe shutdown feature works. First, let's turn on the console. Now let's flick the power button to off. It will run the shutdown command so that the console will be turned off safely. So there you are, you have successfully installed RetroPie along with the MegaPie case. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more upcoming videos. See you guys later, goodbye for now.